up, everyone. Mark Lobliner, IFBB Pro. I knew that was coming. <laughs> CEO, MTS Nutrition, Chief Marketing Officer, TigerFitness.com. Did I mention IFBB Pro? So, um, this, this video will serve a couple purposes. I brought Katie in here because obviously, if you guys follow me on Instagram or YouTube, like the first thing I did is said that video. I'm like, hey, Katie, we did it. I had no idea. It was just like Rocky DeWadrian. We did it. <laughs> but I was crying and I had like, so I won the 40 plus and I had to go back up because I also did the 35 plus. And um, I had like two seconds and I had to send the video. And so I opened up my text to text it. And the first text I saw was from my 15, almost 16 year old daughter with two simple words. Fuck yeah. I would have put don't curse, but I think we're allowed to curse in that situation. But obviously, you know, my family was very important and instrumental and in, in this entire process. And I would also like to say, and not to toot my own horn, that this prep didn't affect our family or our lives one bit, other than not being able to eat as many delicious meals out. But other than that, I think that everything was, was pretty good. I wanted to go over my schedule and how we got this done, and also maybe go into my mindset into how we got this done and what what led to this. Because the reason I retired at 33 years old is because I was unable to handle the pressures of competing alongside the pressures of being a CEO. And I would like to add that not only do I have more companies now than I did, more responsibility than I did in 2013, sorry, 2013, but I also coach full-time high school wrestling strength. And I also have more kids who are doing more sports. All of our kids are in at least two sports, Thomas, wrestling, boxing, soccer, all full-time, okay? Preston, wrestling, boxing, soccer. My daughter, soccer, which is more soccer than the other kids because it's more inclusive at that age. It's more- More practices per week. More practices yeah. per week. And, um, and also travel. wrestling, high school wrestling, which, which is, is very- Every day. Every day. So everybody always asks, how do you get everything done in a day? In fact, Matt Stevens left this morning and when Mark went to the bathroom at the gym, he asked me specifically, were we always this organized and like on schedule before we had kids? And the answer to that was yes. I think it's just our personalities that we're very good at time management. And because we have so many things going on, we have to be very efficient with how we allocate our time. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I explained that to him. And I also explained, like, we've always just been people that have been on time. We're always early, actually, at least 10 minutes early. You're not every, 15 minutes early, you're almost late. Almost annoying sometimes where I get somewhere so early, I'm like, damn it, why did I get here so early? I'm sitting here killing time because I'm gonna look like a total dork coming in early. So anyways, I, I am like the schedule Nazi of our house. And so I'm just gonna share with you how I keep it all all straight um, so that it can kind of play into Mark's schedule. So every year I buy one of these paper calendars and you may be like, oh, that's so 1980s, like daily planner. We're all about well, the 80s. We all, we all have the uh, an iPhone or a Samsung phone or whatever where you can put a calendar in, but it's very different when you look at the calendar on a phone and it's all like in a row, like, oops, like, you know how the phones are in a row. Oh, you can't see that. So for me, my... What are you doing? I'm Maybe just like, you can't see that. Wait, so for me, with three kids and Mark's schedule and myself, I use a planner. And I actually only use like the month at a glance. So this is our November calendar. And what I do is I write down every appointment we have. So if I have a doctor's appointment, a hair appointment, a nail appointment, a dog goes to the vet, a dentist appointment, the kids, all the kids' soccer practices, wrestling, boxing, all go in here. And every person is assigned a color. So I have these fabulous colored pens that are erasable because shit, he's just laughing at me, but this is literally how we do it. Okay, so I'm going to just give you a glance. Hey, I'm not laughing. I got that, that, that calendar led to this, which by the way was okay. other than, other than, you know, those large children passing through. So the what you have to canal. realize is every one of these things written down, Cammie's purple, Thomas is blue, Preston is green, Mark is red, I am pink. We have to get there. So it, it's a line item. Like for on a Monday, Cammy has wrestling from 3 to 5.30. Well, we have to pick her up at 5.30. But Thomas would actually also have to be at wrestling at 5. And Preston would have to be, you know, to wrestling as well. So 
here's what our November looked like and how I kept track of it all, okay? That's the pro card month right okay, there. Okay, so that yeah. is like insanity. There was times on here where all three kids were in a different place and Mark would have coaching. Um, it, it's just insane. But this was my key to keeping things organized. Well, I, you know the saying behind every successful man is a, a smart or a strong woman. I forgot what it is, but like, I think that behind Mark Lobliner is Katie, or actually in front of Mark Lobliner, because I can't see. You know, basically me, I'm a bull in a china shop. I just go, right? And in business as well, like luckily for me, I got Sean Torbati and Ambrosia. I got Chad and Katie with MTS Tiger Fitness and all our other business entities um, that kind of direct me. See, my, my job in life is to get shit done. I'm simply a get shit done type of guy. I'm not a planner. I am a, I'm a fucking wrecking ball. And when you give me a direction or if I create my own direction, I'm going to get it done hundred percent of the time. Unfortunately, like launching a missile that doesn't have any heat seeking technology. Sometimes that missile will aim wrong. And sometimes I'll blow up an entire community that doesn't need to be blown up. So what Chad, Katie and Sean helped me to do is to actually find my target and to go at it. Now, I think nobody's going to argue from Chad to Sean to you that if something needs done, whether it's a presentation for a large retailer, whether it's closing a large account or whether it's getting a project done or a product to market, formulating whatever, I'm going to be the guy. The problem is there's a lot of other tasks going on. Now, between Katie and I and Chad and Sean, we probably have 15 plus companies and this includes stuff Sean has. So we're all juggling different things. You know, and we're also creating new businesses as we go. A lot of people don't realize we got a 3PL, a th third party fulfillment company that actually is doing very, very well. It's called Vorlo Fulfillment. And that also is something we have to, you know, work on. So we don't just have companies in this industry. We have companies in other industries. And we also have three kids that are involved in more sports than we can count. And I like doing stuff. Like I like I boxing. A, a I like competing. Yeah. So I showed how I have a calendar and how I keep track of it, but you have your own daily work to do tasks. How do you keep track of those things? So I use the notes. I use straight up notes. So you and have I a running, I go. No, okay. a running list. So kind of like my grocery list. And I, I prioritize. And also I allow for shit happens because a lot of what I do, for example, we're presenting to a very large retailer. I don't want to say it out loud. I don't think I'm allowed to. And mm -hmm. every day they could be like, hey, we need to get on the phone with them now. Right. We have another large retailer that by basically we just closed. I can say this one, you know, Big Lots, the uh, the Big Lots, we Outright Bar is going into Big Lots next year. And that literally in stardom, that actually might get in before the end of this year, which is huge. And that shows you the reach of the Outright Bar. For example, I got a call on a Thursday. Hey, we have an opportunity to present to Big Lots and I had to drop everything and get on that. So my schedule has to be more flexible than let's say Chad's or Sean's or whatever, because I'm the guy who closes those deals. Mm -hmm. So, and I also have a great team behind me, but I'm the guy leading the charge. I'm the general. I'm the guy who's going to get that information out there. So the way we do it now, let's go over standard day. Standard day is I usually get up, um, anytime during prep, I would get up anytime between four 30 and 5 AM somewhere in there. I have a sleep app, which sets basically, I set the alarm for five and it has a 20 minute window where it wakes me up when it feels that my body's the most ready to wake up. And at 4.45, you're not ready to wake up, but I get up anyway. So after that, I take all my pills, all my vitamins. Oh, wait, we got a puppy at the beginning of November, so. I let the dog out, yeah. you know. Um, well, <laughs> but, I, well, I always let the dogs out when I wake up. Although Ruckus is older, he doesn't wake up all the time. Sometimes no, he's like, I'm you have to yell at him to come down. So time. anyway, so I take all my pills, vitamins, this and that. I go, I hit the shower, I actually shower first. And then I'll do cardio. Um, I'll do, uh, during prep, I was doing 30 minutes of cardio in the morning. So once I get done with cardio, I come home and the kids are starting to get ready for school. So I will help Katie get ready for school. If she has it 100%, I'll sit there at the kitchen table and get work done. Because over the night, course of the night, I'll have probably 50 to 100 messages I have to revert to. Also remember, we're on a global economy. So I'll have messages from other countries such as Australia, such as the UK, such as whatever. And also customer inquiries and also stuff from my business partners. Remember, Sean's on the West Coast. 
Chad's on the East Coast. So we're right in the Central. So Chad works late. Chad will send me an email or a message at 1 a.m. And I'm not going to get that. So I have to attend to that in the morning. And then I get my day organized schedule. I try to clear out all my emails from the day prior. I also coach people at marklobliner.com. And I start doing a lot of the coaching stuff then. And that will usually go until, check it out, caveat, every third week we have carpool. For middle schoolers in our neighborhood. So um, at, that means you leave at 7 a.m., you get back at around 7.30, 7.35. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like, yeah, we have three kids that are in three different schools. So, I mean, three different levels, right? So we have a, an elementary school, a middle school, and a high school. So think about how if you have a kid just in elementary school, all the activities and emails you get. So we get that times three because, you know, each kid's at a different yeah. school. So we only drive Thomas to school in the morning because mm -hmm. if he did it, he's like on the bus for an hour and his day's ridiculously long. So yeah. we have a carpool every third week and Mark usually drives in the morning. I pack three lunches for each kid takes food. Um... Thomas takes food and then also buys him the cafeteria. But the other thing I wanted to throw out there when I was going over my schedule is for many years, it was hard for me to ask other people for help. And we live in a really awesome community Great. now yeah. where we rely on our neighbors a ton for carpool. Yeah. And that has been a lifesaver the last several months. We have the middle school carpool in the morning. We had carpool organized for Thomas's wrestling. Now for now Preston's in the wrestling club. So that we have a neighbor who um, drives Cammie to school in the morning because the daughter is already driving. Cammie gets her license in January. So we have to ask for help. And um, fortunately, like I said, we have it's great break. neighbors. And this last few months would not have been possible without the help of other people. I think I had one day when Mark was gone <clears throat> where I had nine different people helping me get, <laughs> including me driving places. I had nine different people helping me in one day just to get the kids to and from where they needed to be in one given day. I'll tell you what, man. My neighbors were jacked when I got friggin' that pro card, man. They were so excited. Um, my, what, you know, one of our neighbors asked me to sign her breast this morning. Which was, <laughs> Um, so anyway, so, so long story short, we're, we're not worried. Okay. So, name, so we're now at Mark drives so, carpool and gets back at like so, seven 40 so, in the yeah, morning. So then I'll if usually, I'll usually be like, okay, I need some sunlight. So we'll walk press in the bus stop at like eight 15, come back home, eat breakfast. Yep. Um, after breakfast, we, uh, we actually just go, so we, we get probably about a half hour, 45 minutes more of office work done, head to the gym. That's where we get our training done. Normally takes between 60 and 90 minutes. If I had cardio, it'll take anywhere between, you know, eh, 70 to 110 minutes. And right? if the, if it's a day where we need to run some errands, the gym is kind of like, you know, on the side of town where everything is. And we're not far from everything, but it's like 15 minutes. So if we're at the gym and we need to do something right after, it might be like, hey, Mark, you run to the grocery store and I'll run to get pet food or, you know, like something like that. Just try to maximize so we're not driving as much. So, um, so after the gym <clears throat> might be errands or it might be go straight back home to work. So let's assume we get home at like 11 a.m. Generally speaking, I'll schedule my office time as well as any podcasts, any meetings, conference calls, usually scheduled between 12 and 3 p.m. Now, here's where it gets really fun. So we get all that work done between 12 and 3 p.m., eat my meals. I mean, meals I don't go out to eat. I have a refrigerator right there. I grab my food and I eat and I'm good to go. And I eat while I work. I don't like take time and sit there and read the paper. <laughs> so constantly on the go. So at around... So at, at 2.30, Katie goes and gets Cammie from school sometimes. Sometimes, if she doesn't have wrestling so, practice right after. So, like, let's but assume she has wrestling practice after. Right after school. Okay, so normally, if I have early training, let's assume it's an early coaching day. For, I have yeah. the coaching between 4 and 4.30, which is in-season training. It's only a half an hour because any more than that would cut into their recovery and their performance in wrestling. So from 4 to 4.30, I go and wrestle, go and train, go and train the wrestlers. I don't actually wrestle. Okay, so then I get done with that. I come home and I do more office work, okay? And from there, I drive back to the school, get pick Cammy up from practice at wrestling, and go straight to soccer practice while Katie... Well, yes, well, I am, let's say it's the boys. the boys. Well, Thomas was just in wrestling season, so that could mean picking him up from middle school wrestling practice. Um, it could mean getting him to a meet 30 minutes away, 
um, somehow figuring out how we're going to have Preston in that mix could be relying on a neighbor, could be Mark uh -huh. comes back, gets him and then, you know, whatever. So yeah. that, that those after school logistics vary from day to day. Um, yeah. the boys have soccer practice thrown in there on some of the days of the week. Um, so yeah, it just kind of depends on the day of the week and what our responsibilities are. But Cami has wrestling every day. She has soccer practice three days a week. Thomas was having soccer practice three days a week. Preston was at two days a week all through November. Like the month of November was, I think, the craziest we've ever had. And, and, and we, we got preppy, the yeah. puppy. He was prepping. Like it was fun um, though. I I enjoyed it. Yeah. And um, so so then let's say I take Cami to practice and Her let's say it's a seven o'clock practice seven to eight thirty thirty so, minutes away so if the weather's nice i'll usually take ruckus with me and i'll answer emails or listen to podcasts while i do my other cardio okay while cammy's at practice now if the weather's crappy i will drive my butt to carbon culture and i will do my it's cardio 17 there. minutes away from the about 17 place. minutes <laughs> I, so I, mapped it this morning. I either walk slower or step mill faster depending on the weather so when her practice is done it's supposed to end at 8.30. The coach keeps them over every <laughs> fucking time. So normally she'll get out around 8.50. By the time we get home, it's around 9.20, 9.25. Now, <clears throat> if I remember, I call Katie and I tell her to turn on the sauna. From that point, I've already checked my emails while walking. If I need to do something on my computer, I'll do it. I'll do the sauna for 20 minutes, shower. By that time, it's around 10, 10.15. Eat my final meal, and then we go yeah, to bed. Yeah, so rewind, like, rewind. by talking, like, just to make notice in all this, there is not a night during the week where we can sit down and have a family dinner at all, ever. Um, it's even rare a lot of times on the weekends for us to be able to because the kids have wrestling meets now, soccer games out of state. So um, with all this, there's a lot of hustle and bustle. So the days that we do get, like, where we have dinner at home, it's like we're pretty strict about, okay, guys, this is, like, the first week. The first day yeah, sit the hell down that and we've actually all sat down um you know we rely heavily on meal prepping um you know if we can do it on a sunday we have flex pro meals flex pro meals is seriously great. like preston eats empanadas thomas eats various different yeah. ones so it's i eat it's, them it's a staple if you want to if you want to try it it's flexpromeals.com coupon code low blinder saves you 20 percent we really do use them and we actually yeah. use more than they send yes. me. So we pay for them. So we it, actually do pay for them. Now I am, I am sponsored by them theoretically. Um, I guess it's called a sponsorship, but I eat more. We eat more than they supply. So, so we usually order another two times, including my free one. We eat a lot of flex pro meals. Yeah. I mean, I think that's part of like the time mm. management thing. Like I need to spend time mm. doing other things other yeah. than cooking. Um, and actually they prefer them. And yeah, her each, bad. no, it's not. Each kid has like a different preference. So it works out well because they can pick what they're eating. Thomas might want Mexican food and, you know, Preston wants yeah, something I, else. So I'll, it, I'll link it down below, but it's, we weren't planning on pimping them. No, but, but it, that's really a huge do. part of our schedule and saving time. Um, the other thing I want to mention, like you said, you use notes for keeping track of your stuff. Yeah. I use notes for everything. I put reminders <clears throat> in my phone. I start grocery lists as like, mm -hmm. oh, we just ran out of olive oil spray Katie added to the Costco list. So I keep like running lists of to do's for myself personally, yeah. um, grocery lists, stuff like that. Um, and that's super helpful because that way when we go to the store, we're not like, Oh shit, what did we say we need from the grocery store? No, we have a list. I put it in the order. Like I group it like cold stuff, produce so that when we're in the store, we're efficient. It's very efficient. So, so I have Costco in order of the store. Like, you know how it's laid out with produce, meat, refrigerated packaged stuff. So like the circle of the store deleted as you go in the store saves a boatload of time. So basically there's no free time in our lives. No. We, we keep going. No. And if there is, we fill it in with something else. And I think that's what we thrive on. So a couple take homes. Number one is don't procrastinate. Number two is don't be late. Uh, being late is not just rude um, to other people, but it's also going to be inefficient and it's going to, you're going to lose a lot of deals for that. Like yeah. if you're late to a business meeting, you will lose deals. Um, you're never late. Oh, if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. The other thing I was going to add is, as you can tell, just in our discussion is we kind of have set roles. Um, like I keep track of the kid's calendar and basically Mark checks in with me. Hey, what do I need to do today? So I try to figure out like what we need to do if we have to drop a kid off uh -huh. and go back and pick him up. So I kind of, I'm the gatekeeper of the calendar, um, lists for groceries, like I said. The other thing that we didn't even bring up is kind of like 
financials and our bills and our logistics of our house. So I keep track of all that. I have no expectation that like, oh shit, Mark, did you pay the electric bill or whatever? Where I know some people have divided finances and you pay these bills. We have joint finances. I handle all of those kinds of things with the house. And that way there's no hiccups. Like if you're like both trying to manage it, things can get forgotten. So we have very clear roles. Like I generally do the laundry yeah. and I, I generally, you know, just, you just have to have that communication and we do and kind of like set things. <laughs> I, I coach and, and I manage the businesses, you know, and, and that's fine. And, and they are quite, you know, they're, 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 they're other than working. If you want to go straight old school, right? Mm -hmm. Like we have pretty set gender roles in our in our household, you know? Like Katie does a lot of the cooking and the cleaning and I do a lot of the bulk cooking, right? Like, you know, I cook a lot of the, if we want sweet potatoes in bulk or buy, and, and Cammy and our kids eat a lot of bulk food. Yeah. So we don't like sit down and Katie's like, I'm gonna make chicken cacciatore tonight. No, so we got chicken, sweet potatoes, put some barbecue sauce yeah, on that bitch, or a call it a day. Like, you know, there's, that saves time. So when people tell me they don't have time to do stuff, I can't help but to laugh in their face. Well, and that was something that I was talking to Matt about this morning, right? Because I said, Matt, like he, you know, he asked if we were like this before we had, yeah. had kids. And I said, yeah, we were. Because if, and if we weren't as regimented as we were, we would be a hot mess. Yeah, um, you know, that is, I, I say this with all due respect to people that don't have kids. If you don't have kids, you don't know what busy is. Um, I thought I was busy before I didn't have kids. I mean, I didn't know anything else. I thought I was busy when I had two dogs and no kids. No, 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 no. I don't care if you're working a hundred hours a week, like you don't know busy until you, cause you have to, there's so many responsibilities, like, <laughs> like getting them places, feeding them, making sure they have clothes to wear that fit them, uh, the right shoes in the right size for soccer practice. Like there's so all these little things. Yeah, Take a lot of effort. <laughs> we had a um, we had to go from Cammy's meat straight to Thomas's practice. He forgot his cleats. Yep. And I'm like, oh shit. So I drive back home, get the cleats. So our kids are forced into this regimented lifestyle because it's the only way we get things done. And and that's what you do as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, is you know, you, you don't you don't have that. I will say that, you know, as someone when you travel or let's say if the kids don't have soccer one night, we're done at like five PM. It's like, amazing. Like we're never both home in the evening. And like, there's days where I like hope that soccer practice is rained out or whatever, just to have one night a week where we're like all home together for an hour and awake and not asleep. <laughs> well, the funny thing is like, even today, like I got three hours of sleep. I got up for the carpool because I came back from moaning my pro card. And, uh, it was like, like probably 30 minutes ago. I'm like, we haven't hugged yet. Like we literally just got up and got going and we don't even think about it. No. You know, we're just like, we got to work. And, and, and that, that's something that we can't sustain forever as a couple. It's not good. Like, I'm not saying this is a great way to live your whole life, but right. right now we have no choice. We have three kids who have shit to do. We have companies to run. We have empires to build. And I refuse to lose. Like, that's the thing. People are fucking losers. Stop being a fucking loser. Just get it done. Oh, I have so much going on. Find a fucking way. I have no time. You have no time? Uh, well, These people say they have no time. Then they'll talk about binge watching Lucifer on Netflix. Shut the fuck up. There is some benefit of our craziness because it's teaching the kids responsibilities. Like Cammie, if she's not going to be on time, she she's like upset about it She's like mess. we it's res this is the other thing being on time shows respect to the other people that are going to yes, be there yes. you know like if i have to sit and wait for you for 15 minutes that's just disrespectful to my time so it's teaching the kids responsibility like cammy's gonna be 16 she'll be driving soon that's gonna help a ton thomas is almost 14 so they are, are you know that's like a good age they can do some stuff by themselves but they can't drive themselves places so you know well we aren't wiping anyone's ass anymore no, not <laughs> or changing diapers or days. like giving bottles like our children can feed themselves you know they know how to use the microwave whatever there, there's there is a benefit of teaching kids this responsibility i think it will help them in life um a lot oh it absolutely will so that's pretty much a day in our yeah, life yeah so what's what's some good take home that's so why people a, like vlogging i'm like i have no time yeah to vlog. this is a long video already uh, like the, 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 yeah this is i think kind of nor day uh, yeah. the, the, the take i don't want to forget uh, a kid like i was, I was, get, I, was get, I was getting into the take home and then you started that one sorry I so, so honestly the take home is beyond time the take home is don't think about it don't over obviously set your plan and just fucking do yeah. it and, and don't ever say you don't have time. There's time. If we can find time, you can find time.
Prioritize. And, and the bottom line is, yeah, and obviously prioritize. Some things aren't going to get done. So if you wanted to go see a movie and you have that choice or a choice of something that'll make you a huge return on investment, well, maybe go for the ROI. So I think there's a lot to learn from this. Um, hopefully this helped you in understanding how we budget our time as business owners, as well as parents, as well as, well, an IFBB pro bodybuilder now. And there's never an excuse like bodybuilding or being in shape. Let's say, don't be a pro bodybuilder. It's stupid, right? Um, but let's say you just don't want to be fat and you want to live a long life and you want to be healthy. Okay. Everybody has 30 minutes a day to exercise. Everybody does. Everybody does. And at the end of the day, the reason people don't is because they're fucking lazy. There's nobody, if I can find time to become an IFBB pro, you can find time to be active, to move, to walk, to lift. You can find the time. You just don't want to if you're one of these people. And I hate seeing that. Oh, I just don't have the time. Bro, we all have the time. You need to make it. And as far as sleep, we sleep. Yeah, we I get was, enough sleep. Other thing I was going to say is we're not the type of people like, oh, this needs done. We got to stay up to 2 a.m. and do it. Like we don't because we've prior, we've we've scheduled our stuff so well during the day and that we don't have that. No, we I, I don't pull all-nighters because no. you're not going to be efficient. It, right. It's going to mess up the rest of your week. Right, exactly. And you're going to get sick. You know, yeah. you're going to get sick. Um, and there's a lot of shit going around. And that's why you need to take Ambrosia Vita. <laughs> so anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um we have a lot of things like this. You know, I think it's a, a ways we can help. Look, man, I am an IFBB pro now, and I know a lot of IFBB pros, you know, make their clout on competing and stuff. And I will too. I'm going to have my Griff videos where I lift and I, I cook and I do all that. But I think the main thing you could take home from me is that, look, I'm 41 years old. I took five, five years to box and eight years off of competing. And I came back in August and I came back and I, I earned a pro card, something I've always wanted in my life. Just because you're busy, just because you have kids, just because you have responsibilities, doesn't mean that you can't set goals and reach them. You just need to budget the time. However, I need you to be, uh, I need you to have some, uh, some, some introspective of what you're doing, right? If it is affecting your life negatively, do not do it. Right. Okay. I know a lot of people who have ruined marriage over it. I know a lot of people have ruined their jobs. I've had to fire people over competing. So little footnote too, we realize we do have a slight perk of having our own businesses where some people have to be in a physical office yeah, from nine to five. Like I, I honestly we don't, know. that that's hard. I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we, that, that we, is. We couldn't have our kids in as many activities. No, as that, no, no, we're no. both in an office. No, and, and, and we get to, and I get to cut out and go to these tournaments and coach. And right. I get that. You know, I get that we have that advantage, but remember that didn't come for free. We worked our ass off right. to get that. It wasn't always so, like that. So at the end of the day, man, I need you guys to just not not take no for an answer. But if you are deciding to do something like compete, I really want you to to focus on your attitude. Like the main thing difference between me at 41 and me at 33 when I used to compete is that I'm mature enough to know that if something is negatively affecting me to back off of it. And you just need to have that foresight to be able to say, hey, you know, this is a negative situation. So I either need to figure out a way to mentally and physically fix it, or I need to just vacate the situation. So that's it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and click on the notification bell. We have a lot of things going on. Um, of course, if you're not already, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, at Mark Lobliner, all that good stuff, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm Mark with my wife. <laughs> Going through puberty, Katie Lowliner. <laughs> oh, I'm choking on like something I ate earlier that came out of my teeth or something. Ew. Ah, that's not a game. This is my first full workout on Ambrosia Kinetic Blue Raspberry. Let me just tell you this: this is the pre-workout that you need to take your workouts to the next level. We didn't just want to launch a pre-workout. That's just like every other pre-workout. We wanted a mushroom enhanced pre-workout that addresses the things you need, mental focus, energy, and power. Ambrosia Kinetic will not only take your body to that next level, it will also take your mind to that next level to give you the best workouts of your life.